various protocols that guide the way we use the internet. One of such protocols is the FTP. Let's talk about FTP, shall we? Hi, and welcome back to my channel. On this channel, I provide resources for health science students, researchers, professionals, to make them better equipped to solve our health problems and live more productive lives. So today we are going to be talking about FTP and I will do this quickly by telling you what is FTP, why was FTP invented, what is the origin of FTP, what model FTP uses and what is an FTP site, how to use FTP and lots more. Now if this sounds interesting to you, let's do this shall we? So what is FTP? FTP stands for File Transfer Protocol. And as the name suggests, it is a protocol that is used to transfer files across a network. Now, what does this really mean? Let me explain. When you have two computers connected to each other, you get a simple network, right? Now, if you want to transfer anything from one of the computers to the other on that very simple network, you don't just go around sending stuff without fulfilling some of the requirements, right? Otherwise, things will become chaotic and inefficient or may even not work in the first place. This is simply because the way the transfer will be processed will not make much sense if there were no standards to guide this process. And this is just speaking of only two computers. What about when you have the entire internet with hundreds of millions of computers connected in a network? That's a recipe for disaster. Imagine how chaotic that will be without any standards that guide and refine this process. Now just like any important process you want to undergo in this world, you need to follow the rules that help to guide the process. Well, also with computer networks like the internet, there are sets of rules guiding any activity on the internet and these sets of rules are called protocols okay now there are lots of things that you may want to transfer from one computer to another across a network you may want to transfer files messages or even services all right for all of these there are protocols that are put in place to standardize and guide this process of sharing stuff across the internet one of such protocol is the file transfer protocol all right that's ftp as the name suggests it is a protocol that is used to transfer files between computers on the internet now ftp is so interesting that it uses a particular model for this file transfer this model is called the client server model okay and in the simplest terms the client server model is a model where there is a server okay and this server is a computer that hosts files that need to be transferred all right then we have the client computer which wants to get the files that is located on the server all right in this model the client can connect um, to and can download from and even upload files to the server easy peasy right now depending on how old you are i'm pretty sure that most of you watching this video have already used ftp before and because this used to be the common place to download files from friends or to download software or software drivers from the internet but these days you don't see ftp used as much as before so what you see being used mostly is https all right in some specialized cases it is used in network management and web development all right but how did ftp start was it always like this from the beginning who are the people setting up all of this, all right? Let's talk about the origins of FTP. You know, the internet was in existence before the World Wide Web, right? And in the early times of the internet, you needed to have some advanced level of training in computer programming, or you needed to know how to use some complex sets of commands to be able to use the internet for anything. And this included using the internet for file transfer, all right? But this was about to change. The IETF, which is an international community of network designers, operators, vendors, and researchers who are tasked with the evolution of the internet architecture and the smooth operation of the internet came to the rescue. All right. So what the folks at the IETF do is to ensure that the structure of the internet is continuously improved and they make sure processes on the internet are easy and efficient. All right. So these good guys at the IETF, after noticing the difficulty that is faced in file transfer on the internet, they went ahead to establish a standard protocol for transferring files between computer systems. And this was in the early 1970s. All right. I don't think that the IETF did all of this at once. Nah. All right, this was done as a series of what we call requests for comments, all right? RFCs for short. So what are these RFCs? Well, these RFCs are simple documents that contain technical specifications and organizational notes for improving the internet. These RFCs are given sequential numbers based on what the issue is at that particular time. And the particular RFC that was established for the FTP protocol was the RFC number 114. And this was published in 
1971. Over the years, that document has been revised with newer versions making changes to improved FTP protocol. The current standard specification is RFC 959 and this was published in 1985. Now up till today, the RFC document is still being amended by the IETF with revisions made to improve the security of the FTP and adding support for newer technologies. So in short, we had the internet. It wasn't easy to transfer files across the network in the beginning and then we had the amazing group of people at the IETF that established the FTP, all right? And improved the use of the internet um, for file transfer. And they do this by publishing this important document called RFC. So this is how the file transfer protocol was established and still improved upon up till this day. Okie dokie, Adichoki. So what are the various actions and things you need to know when using FTP? Well, you need to know about the FTP site, uh, anonymous FTP, put as well as get commands. And now you've heard me mention FTP site several times, all right? Well, what is this FTP site? Well, this is basically a hosting server that contains files for download as well as upload, all right? To access any FTP site, you need to type in the address which begins with FTTP colon double forward slash, all right? And uh, note that this is different from HTTP that uh, you're all used to, all right? And you can access this either using a browser or using an FTP client software. And there are several ones that you can choose from, okay? There's the CyberDoc, all right? There's uh, Qt FTP, uh, Free FTP, and the most common one of them is uh, FileZilla. Now, if you want to learn how to use FTP, all right? Check out this video here that shows you how to use FileZilla for free. All right. Now, in order to use this FTP server, you will need to know, first of all, the server address. All right. Then you will need to know the username and then a password, as well as know the port number that you are connecting to. All right. Wait, but can you get access to an FTP server without having to log in with your username and password? Well, the short answer is yes. Okay, enter the anonymous FTP. Now, there are several public servers that allow users to log into them without an account. So users can log into them and download files anonymously without having a username or password. That's cool, right? And this is called anonymous FTP. But you need to take note that even though this is said to be anonymous, your IP is still being tracked. So you need to be careful. Be careful of the FTP sites that you visit so you don't go and get yourself into trouble. As lots of people um, use FTP sites to download latest versions of movies. And these are obviously pirated movies, which are illegal to download, all right? Now, because you didn't need to log in and put your username and password, you, you think you cannot be tracked? Well, think again. Now, what actions can you do when you have access to an FTP site? This is where we talk about the get action. Now, when you visit an FTP site, you can download a file by copying it from the FTP site to your own system or your own computer, all right? And this is called get. Basically, it's just a fancier way of saying download the file. All right, like you are getting the file from somewhere, right? Okay, so um, I log into an FTP site, all right, like this, and then I see this particular video file and I want it, I just get it. Easy peasy, right? Well, guess what? You can also upload files to FTP sites, all right? Uploading files to FTP sites is known as put. You can also upload files by copying files from your computer system to the FTP site, and this is what is called put. And like I said, it's just a fancy way of also saying upload. All right, so the files were not on the FTP site and you just want to put them there, all right? Now, you need to know that you can only put files on the server if you are authorized to do so. And that means you must have logged in with your username and password, all right? And so what this simply means is that with anonymous FTP, you cannot upload files to the server. Yes, uploading is restricted to authorized users only. So with all that has been said, what are the uses of FTP? Well, there are five common use cases of FTP. Uh, the first one is very obvious, all right? Yes, it's used for transferring large files among two parties that are too large to be transferred using um, email attachments. So some individuals, when they have large files they want to send to their friends or colleagues, they set up their computer as an FTP server, all right? And the receiver computer will be the host server and this can be used to transfer such files okay this is what some people use these days to send latest versions of pirated movies like I said earlier and they send it to their friends in different parts of the world okay but remember piracy is illegal say no to piracy guys the next common use case is for uploading web pages to web servers for publishing on the internet, all right? So web developers make web pages which contain several items embedded, which include text, videos, and audios. And this can sometimes get very heavy, all right? They use FTP to upload these web pages to the web servers, so anyone on the internet that has access to those particular web servers can access and use um, those file pages. Downloading files from public um, software sites. So some public software sites use FTP to allow people to browse and download 
large software files from their servers, making the process seamless and easy. Another is downloading and uploading content like university assignments via an FTP server. All right. Some universities also use FTP server to allow students to uh, easily upload and submit the assignments to the university server. All right. This also permits downloading large files from the university portals like videos and software programs. And lastly, software developers use FTP servers for distributing the latest versions of their programs to clients or to other developers so that they can review and also work with it. All right. Well, now we have seen the various use cases of FTP. Okie dokie, Arichoki. That's all I have for you now, folks. In this video, I've been able to tell you about what FTP is, the origins of FTP, what is an FTP site, anonymous FTP, how FTP is commonly used, and I gave you some use cases. Now, if you have gained value with this video and you want to see more videos like this in future, give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to comment, share, and subscribe to this channel if you have not already done so. All right. In my next video, God willing, I am going to show you how to use FTP for public health activities and how to use it uh, to your own advantage. But until then, peace.